When I got the invitation, you know, I immediately was going back over the years and trying to figure out which one would um, be of interest, you know, to share. And I chose this one because it happened, to my surprise, eight years into the experience of working with ayahuasca. And all the experiences are amazing and profound. And for me, they would generally take on more of the experience of, like, you know, the nature of reality and understanding things about quantum physics and really heady in that way. And, um, and those are all beautiful and profound, but the experience I'm going to share is actually the one that most impacted my life. So we were doing a ceremony out in the desert. It was an all men's ayahuasca work, and um, things were going just kind of normal. You know, we're all sitting around this fire under this beautiful big oak tree, and we've got our uh, maraca, you know, ch -ch 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 just going on and on. It's really beautiful, and I was just feeling the love and grooving with all my brothers there. And then at some point, I became aware that there's this guy standing next to me, you know? And I'm still kind of doing the ch 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 And then suddenly I realized that everybody in the circle is accounted for. So I'm kind of like, okay, wait a minute, that's weird. And then in my head, I'm kind of thinking like, well, somebody must have joined. Um, so at some point, I couldn't deny that there's this person standing there, and I had a little fear around it. And I finally look over, and it's my father, who died five years earlier. As clear as I'm looking at you, there's my dad. And the interesting thing was I couldn't see him if I looked at him directly. But the second I turned, I could see him the way I'm seeing all of you in peripheral vision. And uh, so I kind of stopped the choo choo, <laughs> you know. And uh, he says, great, I've been trying to get your attention. I think you and I should take a walk. So we're out in the middle of the desert. And uh, I wait for this uh, hymn that we're singing to end. And I say to the group, hey, my dad's here, who died five years ago. <laughs> and one of the cool things about people that do ayahuasca is they're like, yeah, all right. <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, uh, he wants to take a walk with me. Can I have permission to leave the circle? Because you make an agreement that you're going to stay with the group. And uh, the leader of the, this particular circle says, yeah, yeah, just make sure that you stay in sight so we can see you, which is, you know, appropriate. So... Uh, I put the maraca down and I get up and I'm like, all right, so we're taking a walk. So here are my dad and I walking off into the desert and uh, no words are spoken. I'm just profoundly touched by, as Dream said, you know, the reality, the stark reality of it in that moment is like, my dad's here, you know? And um, so I'm walking along and trying to figure out like, where, where should I stop, you know? because I'm just uh, walking and walking, and then I come across um, what looked like the remains of a, a gate, maybe to like a ranch um, that's long since fallen away. And it's just kind of standing there. You know, so I figured it was a good place to stop at, kind of like an altar. So I stood there, and he said, you know, um, so there's something I've been wanting to share with you. And as he said that, my two grandfathers appeared. My mother's grandfather and my father's father. And... Uh, they said, we brought you here because we want to apologize for all the pain and suffering that we caused you. And uh, profound silence, of course. And what happened next was the most profound experience of my life. I suddenly had all these memories rise of the pain and suffering they were talking about that I had very successfully blocked away. I had a memory of my father's father coming after me one night because we're jumping on the bed and disturbing him and he had this huge like jute rope and he's like pew, 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 you know whipping the side of all the kids there me included and uh, so I get these welts all over my body then my grandfather on my mother's side flash kind of like morphed into that of similar experience the kids are like playing in the kids room I think we're maybe like seven or eight years old, and he decides he's had enough of us, and he grabs the Hot Wheel tracks. You remember those orange tracks from Hot Wheels? And he rips the thing apart, and again, pew, pew, all these beatings, you know, welts all over my body. And then I have, which I didn't bury, but it successfully thought I had healed from, all the memories of the years of my father doing this same kind of abuse, you know, big leather belts and going to bed with welts all over your body, right? And... Um, I was pretty convinced up to that point, because of all the other work I had done, that I was healed from that, which really had long since forgiven my father, I thought. As this rose up, this incredible anger came up that I'd never experienced before, which I'm pretty sure was just all the anger I'd ever felt about that that was not allowed to express. And I grabbed the railing of this ranch thing, 
and squeeze the whole thing so hard that it snapped, you know? And I just started telling them, I am so fucking pissed at you guys, you know? And uh, it felt really good because I felt the little boy in me being able to confront them finally, you know? And I didn't care that they were apologizing because it didn't matter in that moment, you know? It was a complete injustice and betrayal. So they stood there, of course, and they're taking all that in. And as I'm kind of finishing my round of anger with them, it was like in the movie Contact. I'm in this black time hole, kind of flying through the cosmos. And where I landed was in this vision. I'm like in Africa watching slaves running through grasses, being chased, you know, and fearing for their lives. And I, it's like I was them, I could feel it. And then, of course, they're being like, it's like a montage from a film. I'm seeing them being herded up and, you know, eventually put onto boats and coming to America and being slaves. And in that moment, I realized why my uh, ancestors were showing me this vision, because, ah, oh, my dad said, yeah, we want you to understand that we did that to you because that's what happened to us. Our fathers beat us, and their fathers beat them, and it goes all the way back to slavery in this country. And uh, it was huge. And in that moment, this incredible, exhilarating lift happened. And all I can, the best I can describe it is a sense of freedom. I realized that for the first time in my life that I was actually free. I was liberated from that experience. And uh, with, intuitively, I knew that what was necessary was to heal my entire lineage. Because I had learned from my good friend Miranda, who opened the invocation tonight. She said to me from a workshop she did once, you know, she said, each of us can heal our entire lineage. And I realized in that moment, yeah, we can. The reason why is because you can stop. It doesn't go forward. You can heal whatever it is that's in your ancestral line, and it's done with you. And uh, so I called each of them forward. I called my father's father forward, and I spoke his name, full name. And I said, I completely understand, and I love you, and I forgive you. And he vanished and dissipated. Then I called my mother's father forward. Same thing. I said his complete name, and he slowly kind of vanished and dissipated. Then I called my father's full name and apologized, and uh, he didn't vanish and dissipate. <laughs> It just figures. <laughs> and, uh, but there was this incredible sense of like calm and peace. And in that moment, I realized, you know, I had never really loved. I got my love back. In that moment, I felt for the first time ever, I am free to love, like from the present moment, without a bunch of baggage and story. And it was profound. So um, again, silence with him. And we decide, you know, well, I decide it's time to go back to the ceremony. So we're walking. And I'm kind of like, thinking to myself, yeah, why are you still here, actually? And then, you know, he stops, and I stop, and he says, one more thing. By the way, all those relationships you've been in with your partners, you weren't in a relationship with them. You've been in a relationship with me. It's like, whoa. <laughs> and it was right. <laughs> and in that, I was able to forgive myself and all those partners, because I realized they were going through the same thing. You know, we're all, as you know, entering these relationships with stuff. So uh, I stood there in this incredible, exhilarated moment, and uh, with that, I looked over, and he had vanished and dissipated, too. It's really beautiful. So uh, I felt that the eyewash experience really gave me my life back, quite literally. You know? And from that experience, the seeds of a song were planted that in subsequent eyewash experiences came to full fruition. And Aaron uh, mentioned uh, sharing it with you, so I'm going to, and it's called It Hasn't Come to Me Yet. <laughs> It hasn't come to me yet But when it does, I will know And I'll look in my soul And I'll give you what I have to give And when it does, I will know And I'll look in my soul And I'll give you what I have to give It hasn't come to me yet but when the world sets me free, I will know how to be, and I'll show what you haven't seen yet. When the world sets me free, I will know how to be, and I'll show what you haven't seen yet. It hasn't come to me yet, but it's all been said before I get, so I'll be still and know who I am. But it's all been said 
before I get so I'll be still and know that I know. I'll say thank you for love, thank you for friends, thank you for all that there is. Thank you for love, thank you for friends, thank you for all that there is. Another day, another night, another year you set aside. Another drowning of the tide that brings the life you're learning after. Another moment passes by. Another cloud forms in your eyes. Until the storm breaks and the down around your heart is flooded over. Then Oh, uh -huh.